Hey everybody, you certainly can dig your holes by hand, but I would recommend getting a motorized auger. It even handled rocks up to about the size of maybe your face, and it went down. Well, she knows how big my face is. Look at how deep they went. That's a good proper hole. My only concern is, is how long is that bit? It's a little hard to tell in the video, it's... but if you over dig it, it's got to come out. You're not going to compact that soil enough to prevent any settling. Our rule is, is if it's loose, then it comes out. If you disturb it, it comes out of the hole. Yeah. Yeah, <clears> don't, tr don't try compacting dirt at the bottom of the hole because you're not going to get it compacted. Why? In Florida sand, we can compact that to exactly the way it was. Is that so sand? That's not hey, sand. That's hey. that's clay soil. In my you're area, not gonna get that in my area, it's I'm right. You're wrong. Just admit it. Okay, whatever. Before this turns into fisticuffs, let's keep moving. <laughs> So for this massive undertaking, I did have help. This is my neighbor, John. I did see a keyhole in the bottom of that post, and it does look like it's three feet deep. And I would say that digging the holes is one of the hardest parts of this process to get ready for a fence. Yeah, the, the hardest part of the fence is digging the holes. That's why anybody that's ever come to us is like, well, if you could just put the posts in, then we can take it from there. It's because that's the worst part. However, that is the most important and critical part because that will determine what your fence looks like for its lifetime and whether or not it fails or succeeds, it's all in the post. Uh, I would also like to submit that, okay, well, I, maybe I changed my I mind. A couple rocks there's, there. there's that rock right there is definitely That's the size about of as my big face. As your face yep. I was gonna say this ground looks good enough where we probably could have pounded these posts and not even dug and had to clean up this mess. You maybe still could have done it. We had a lot of dirt with this project. You're going to want to plan for where you're gonna put the dirt you dig up and how you're gonna get dirt to fill the post back in. Now, anytime you can avoid cleaning up the dirt by using a no dig system though, the time savings is immense. I like your little uh, concrete muckrake nice for cleaning up the grass. My neighbor, John, uh, told me that if you use a concrete placer, you can actually scrape up the dirt into a pile much easier. And I cannot believe how clean my grass was after we did this. I agree. I think that's, I've never thought about doing that. Square shovel is also handy there. Yeah. Dry fit all of your posts. The line is going to serve two functions. One is to keep the fence straight. And then the second thing that it's going to do for us is keep the depth correct. The fact that Superior's installation instructions included cementing in every single post is what I believe gives their fencing the super strength to withstand high winds and terrible weather. Okay, high winds and terrible weather. Thinking about wind anytime you're building a solid privacy fence is extremely important and that comes down to post foundation and also strength. I don't think that simply setting a post in concrete means that it will withstand high wind situations. I, I think she missed a couple things there with that blanket statement depth diameter quality of concrete a little bit how about the thickness of the post do we use 0.135 yep. wall posts yep. no we don't so all of our posts that we use here in wyoming are 150 because we don't have any steel inside them when we do a dig set job like this and we're worried about that wind and that makes a huge difference we've seen a lot of failures from 135 wall fence posts so it's nothing for us to see a 70 mile an hour wind here 80 to 90 mile an hour winds yearly a lot of times that happens in the winter when the vinyl it's is at its winter. weakest and it's yeah. most brittle. Use a good vinyl and use a you know use a thicker post. Look for somebody that's selling a 150 wall post and you'll have a better chance of success. Their products come with a limited lifetime warranty and they come with a five-year prorated labor warranty. Okay, should we talk about warranties, vinyl warranties? I feel like it's worth mentioning. Uh, you might want to sit down for this. There are a lot of caveats when it comes to vinyl warranties. Most oftentimes you'll hear people say our product has a lifetime warranty. What you need to understand is, is that there may be some caveats. I know some manufacturers out there that require you to register your product within 30 days of its installation. If you want to then transfer that, you have to transfer that through a registration process as well. So the first time you forget to do that, your warranty is void. If you forget to register your product, guess what? Your warranty technically is void. A lot of them will not cover any labor. They'll only cover the product itself, which as we just talked about, the labor is the most expensive part of this fence, especially putting the posts in. So if you have post failure, you're going to have to pay for a ton of labor because now you have to remove all that, plus you have to reinstall it. They're giving you a $20 post and you're having to pay $60, $70 just to replace that post. So the biggest burden of that replacement cost is on you in most cases. The other thing people forget about is that they're not gonna warranty it for acts of God. It's just not gonna happen. 
If there's been known to be high winds in your area, they're, they're not gonna do it. We've even had problems with the manufacturer. We had a fence blow over when we switched to a different manufacturer here a couple years ago and experienced more failures. In fact, the only failures that we've ever had in the history of our company went to them and they said, no, there was high winds that day. We're not gonna warranty it. Well, that I can't help you with, I'm very <laughs> I mean, they, they fought us tooth and nail and they definitely did not want to cover any labor, so. There's nothing we can do. This is all warm, fuzzy stuff to make you feel really good, but in the, in the end, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of these companies have gone out of business. I know in the last five or six years, there's been four or five that I can think of off the top of my head that manufacturers have gone out of business. Once they're out of business, your warranty's also dead. So think about the company you're doing business with and think about the manufacturer, how long have they been around? Because that's really gonna determine what your warranty is. When those failures happened to our customers, did they have to pay a dime? No, we covered it. Yeah, we don't fail trite. I mean, our, the company that we bought from should have stood behind their product, but when they didn't, we stepped up because that's the kind of company we want to be. So look for those kind of companies, and that's usually borne out through Google reviews. You can usually tell the good companies that stand behind their product and reviews. Now we are going to check level both ways, and John's helping by moving the bottom of the post to kind of get it where we need it to be before we press it down into the cement that's in the bottom. The of stab the method. I like the stab One method. method that was very She's doing a cross I method, like a hybrid slightly. method. Level half stab, half pour around. So it's so important that your post is level on both sides and not pushing against your line. You want it to be just barely touching the line. I want it to be this just barely off the line. The yes, that for just barely off the line. Because if you're just barely touching the line so every, every post time. down the road, you're you're moving that line that as you go. We just braced it both ways. So we kind of created a tripod with these pieces of wood and we... So we've talked about this, we've covered this in other videos, and this is, you don't have to do this. And this is a wasted step. What would you do instead? What I would do is I would finish filling it with concrete, put dirt back over the top. Close to plumb both directions. Fill the thing the rest of the way up with your concrete. Leave a little bit of your dirt to the side of your hole. Kick your dirt over the top of the concrete and then you can kind of pack that down with your foot. And then as you pack that dirt down, you're also stabilizing up that post. Mm -hmm. And that post is not going to move very easily then. Recheck plumb, tap the dirt as needed to, to plumb it. The other thing that's happening with that dirt is it's sucking a little bit of that moisture out. Her dirt looks pretty dry, so you suck a little bit of that moisture out of the top so that top cures just a little bit faster. And like if the wind comes up, it's good. We, we pour in high winds all the time without correct. any issue. Yeah, correct. There, there's so. no need for bracing. Hey, stop it. Just stop it. Well, I would even say you could fill around the outside of the post. It's a little tougher because you put your post all the way to the bottom, then you fill around the outside, and sometimes when you put that concrete in there, it moves the post one way or another. It can be really hard, especially for beginners, to get that right. So the stab method is far and away the easiest. It takes a little more concrete to do that, but it's it's gonna give you a really good product. It'll lock that post in there really well. That's where that extra bag comes into play. That's the extra three or four. Yeah, the extra three or four. I would say she's using every bit of four bags on these. Oh, absolutely. So the other end of the wood beam that's using to prop up the post got a wooden stake pounded into the ground next to it and then we that's just a lot of work that is a lot of work together. for this just makes sure nothing what i consider no reason it allowed our post to cure perfectly level up and down don't forget before you brace the post to check your depth i see you're leaning down there the other thing you can do is you can take some sort of a removable marker a pencil pencils wipe off pretty easy and put a mark right at the bottom of that hole Mm -hmm. so that it's right at your string you know right when your elevation is correct so, so then all you got to do is line your mark up with your string yeah between each set of two posts i pulled up our spaced two by four and checked the top as well but do you, I, I feel like you have something to say about I, this i do okay so this step really isn't needed if you've already double checked triple checked your spacing at the bottom and you've plumbed your post in theory everything should be good all the way up if you're off just a little bit at the top it's not gonna hurt anything. Vinyl will flex a little bit when you snap in your, your pickets and then your rails. All that stuff's gonna all buff out. Because he's saying if your posts are just a little bit like this, you can flex them and they'll go like this. There's, there's some people that would tell you if you're out an eighth of an inch, you're a trash fence builder. Probably. I've seen, probably. I've seen them. I've seen them. Okay. Um, oh, you know, I guess, you know, at some point I have to just move on though. Here, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time with all this bracing and then this double checking the top and the bottom. I mean, we're spending a lot of time on just this little step. We filled all of the holes with cement up to about two to three inches Concrete. below the grass line. That was a lot of wood. We usually don't take this step because that grass will fill in that void pretty quickly. Assembly. 
So we're going thing to, to note know. there was the gap between the bottom rail and the ground. You know, it was it was a little largest right there, you know? right behind her here. You yeah. can see yeah. it. So probably because she's trying to keep the top flat. Now mm -hmm. there's there's a discussion level. Talking about the top of the fence being level. If you were going to build a building on top of it, it would be level. But flat also could mean it's going down a grade, but all of them are a consistent, even slope. And so that would be a flat fence following the grade. Probably what she's trying to do is keep the fence flat. And mm -hmm. that is more than likely because a lot of people struggle trying to get rolls and make it look good. If you have small dogs, I would be a little bit worried about the gap in some of these places. We'll see what it yeah. looks like when it's done. You can see that there's a tree right behind her and more than likely the ground humps right there by yeah. that tree. She's got a bottom rail stiffener, which is good. I'm going to guess those are inch and a half by five and a half, and she's spanning eight feet, so I would definitely recommend that yeah. bottom rail stiffener. Mm -hmm. You guys are using an inch and three quarter by eight inch rail. We're using a two by seven, so very similar in strength, and we're spanning eight feet with those. But these inch and a half by five and a half rails, anytime you're going eight feet with those, I would definitely say you need a stiffener because of sag issues. And this rail has an aluminum insert to provide extra strength. This just has plastic tabs on each end that pop into the holes on each post. She'd have an easier time inserting that rail if she inserted the free end into the open post and then went back the other way. Go the other, Go way. The other way! Those are called those are called notches. Yeah, and they're absolutely important in the bottom rail. And you can get rail notchers, so if you need to trim this down. But, but if you're doing if you're doing a no-dig system, you don't have to notch your bottom rail. No, because it's locked between the two posts, so no notch is necessary. In fact, the notches just irritate me more than anything. Then you align a small plastic C-channel on each of the posts on both sides. This Good is job using a C-channel. Um, is she going to screw it? Is she going to screw it? Come on. I think she is. These are as simple as screwing three screws into yes. the Yep. Yeah. Good job, Melissa. Way to go. You just did a better job than probably 80% of the fence companies out there. Oh, don't call them out. <laughs> I'm gonna. Now I'm starting in one of my C-channels and pushing the slat down into the bottom as well as into that C-channel. Then the tongue and groove mechanism on each of these just click together. It's so easy and I can put together one of these panels very, very quickly. So that's one of the things because she used full space sections, she didn't have to do any cutting which sped things up and then she also didn't have to cut any or rip any pickets. So mm -hmm. there is some benefit to that. We'll see if it if there's some drawbacks here in a minute. The post where you're going to install a gate, you need to put in these metal I-beam inserts to give it enough strength to withstand being used like open and closed like that. So uh, we decided to do a double gate um, so that we could fit a car through. So it's just shy of eight feet wide and we just had two, four. What she's not telling you is on that post, she didn't fill her, usually we would put that I-beam in the post before we stab it into the concrete so it's locked in with everything else. She obviously taped off the bottom of the post or something so that she could sit that in there later on and didn't have to cut it off. Had she filled the inside of that post with concrete, she would have ran into some problems there. Before our privacy fence was installed, our That's backyard a pretty good size gap. a road. And now that we have six feet of no visibility, the road is totally cut off and our yard is so much more private and safe for our children to play. I absolutely oh. love it. That's my that's my big question is why is the table right there at the gate? I don't think she has her drop rods in. Yeah, I think she doesn't have her drop rods. So she needs a couple drop rods there because I don't see any drop rods on that. I don't see the right. latch in there yet either. Okay, so what do we think? What do we think about Melissa's build? Man, thumbs up. I'm gonna go as far as to say that not only is that a solid build, but that's again, that's probably better than it's more professional oh, than a man. lot of professionals. More professional, yeah, more professional than a lot of professionals. Let's uh, we'll we'll say it that I'm gonna say better than eighty percent of the contractors out there. Agreed. That's a solid install. So freaking like double thumbs up for Melissa here. I, don't for, do I mean, that for very somebody often. That, somebody that's brand new at it, and never even tried it. Mm -hmm. Like there was a couple things that she could have done better, but it, and overall, yeah, that fence doesn't go anywhere. And I see, I saw her taking the loose dirt out. Those posts were all the way three feet in the ground. I mm -hmm. feel really good about the fact that that fence still looks good today. Make sure to check out the original video from Melissa. Tell her we sent you over there. Great channel. Great job, Melissa. And until next time, I'm Mark with SWI. I'm Dan. I'm Alan with SWI. And we hope you have a good dang day.